Hey kids, here we are. This is our question, uh, well, what is it, Q&A? Q&A. Q&A number two. We call it Q&A. All right. Whatever so, that means. this is how it's going to go. I'm going to ask you a question and you say something. All okay. right. So, Mark, what is the hardest accept song for you to sing? All of them. <laughs> there you go. Uh, usually, be perfectly honest, it's always the first one out of the gate because you're never... Makes sense. You're never quite warmed up as you would like to be. So right now, I guess it's zombie apocalypse. Is it? Because... Well, yeah. Uh, but, it's, it, but it's really not, but, you know... It, but you do warm up. Yeah, I, I do warm up, but you're never quite... This is one thing about Mark. As, he warms up like a motherfucker. As hot as you would like to be when you hit the stage. So, yeah. you know, the, but there's no easy ones, so... Okay, there you have it. So, question number two. Question number two. Wolf, you and Michael Schenker are the reason I play guitar. Oh. Thanks for decades of great music. What was your guitar rig back in the band's early days, 70s, 80s, and do you still have that white flying V? Yes, I do have the white flying V. The white flying V. That was a Gibson? Yeah, it was a Gibson. Uh, and I actually even have York Fisher's. The, the two Ooh. of them together is a nice little tandem, and they sit nicely in storage. And uh, that's where they huh. remain, because I now play famous guitars. And my rig back in the day was always Marshall in different shapes of form. And um, yeah, I don't have those anymore, because we're now on Kempers. But mm -hmm. You really don't have, the, you don't have any of those heads anymore either? No, got rid oh, of them ones all. that were in no, the because basement. Basically, yeah, I had the whole basement full of. I know you had a basement full of them. Um, but all kinds of different amps. I figured after years and years of not ever switching them on, it was time to let to let them go. But everything got assimilated into the Kemper. That's right. Well, what you hear is the Kemper, but yeah, but you. I don't have the actual, actual physical box yeah. anymore. No. All, all right. right. So, Mark. What was it like auditioning for Accept, and how did it happen? The story many times told. Yes, many times told. I'm not going to get that far into it. All I know is the phone rang one day, and I went and jammed with these guys. It wasn't really a formal audition. No. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I got a phone call about, about doing an album and a tour, and that was it. That was in, what year was that, 2008 or nine? I always I think forget. that was eight. 2000? Mm, yeah, I think... I, I can never sure. get that right. It was yeah, me neither. Somewhere around 2008 or 2009. And yeah, we never even thought about regrouping the band until we met Mr. Mark here. And we never auditioned anybody else. So it really wasn't a proper audition, so to say. <laughs> we just jammed. Yeah, <laughs> you like me now. <laughs> we, just, we just jammed and had a good time. And like, <clears throat> There's the voice. Yeah. That fits perfectly. So, all right. Next question, number four. Number four. Let's see. Wolf and Mark. What's your approach to songwriting? Do you have a process? What is it? Well, yes and no. Do we have a process? Well, I it's, usually start Every with song's them. different. It is. We just jammed on something and sort of hashed it out together today or yesterday. Yes. Because we're in the songwriting mode right now. Um, but a lot of times I start with collecting some riffs and ideas and then just sort of building first song structures, first song ideas. And then I send them to you eventually. And then they're... sometimes I will send lyrics. That's right. Or just titles, even. Song titles, if it grabs me the right way, and hopefully it grabs him the right way. But, uh, yeah, it goes both ways. True. So, it's, uh, there's, so there's really no set process, It's but it is a process. Yeah, well, the one thing I, I noticed that doesn't really work so well, or it's incredibly hard. If you have like five people in the room and you want to write the song together, it's yeah. either it was two or maybe three, but as soon as there's too many, too, too many, many cooks, too many cooks spoil the soup. So they well, say. And it goes, sometimes it goes into each possible direction and you can't never agree on anything and everybody starts disliking everything and it's like, ah, it's a big old mess. And I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you mess with my song? All right, Mark. Oh no. What was your favorite song to write and sing from the last five Accept albums? What's your favorite song to sing off the classics? Hoping Mark will last, what? Many more Accept albums. Yeah, you better. Cheers. Cheers. Mark, you better I, last many see, more albums. What's my favorite one to write and sing? Wow. Uh, 
Teutonic that Terror. It has to be Teutonic Terror, I would say. That and Shadow Soldiers are probably two of my favorites that we've written together and that I get to sing. Um, as far as the old ones, the classics, wow. Really enjoyed singing Breaker on this last tour. That was yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. Um, some of the ones that we don't haven't been doing lately either, like Aiming High and you know, there's there's some some that Rick cool Orgy was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was. That was that was very cool too. A lot of good songs in there. Demon's Night. Ah Metal. Oh yes. We like that. All right. Next My you, turn. Wolf. Yeah, your turn. Wolf, I've read that you made uh the photo slash artwork for Objection Overruled. Did you also do the artwork for Predator, 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 <laughs> and Death Row. I did, indeed. Was it difficult to come up with these ideas? Um, I didn't necessarily come up with the ideas. I think at some point we had the idea of what we wanted to do, and then since I was or am a photographer, it was easy to do. Once you have sort of the picture in your head, you can just go ahead and instead of going to somebody and telling him what you see, it might as well do it yourself that makes sense um and yeah which is out of necessities i mean a lot of times we make things or i mean what we haven't well we, yes I, even back in the 80s we've we've made a video ourselves <laughs> but mostly we've always done stuff like that didn't you take the shot for blood of the nations too blood of the yeah i did yeah yeah, yeah of course hello. I did. hello there you go hello. boom boom baby i did of course i did and sometimes I take even uh, bad photos. Of course, then somebody needs to take my picture, but we've yes. done even that. What else? Uh, let's see. Um, Wolf and Mark, who would be your all, uh, who would be in your all star band? Please name the singer. Two guitarists, bass, and oh come oh on, goodness. that's a, oh, Jeez. Jesus. Uh, Ronnie James Dio would be the singer. Okay, who's the guitar player? Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Who uh, else? We can't be in it, so you no. Um, bass player, Geezer Butler. Geezer Butler, good. How about uh, uh, Cozy Powell as a drummer? Or Tommy Aldrich. No, Cozy Powell, sorry. Okay, you win. And We're supposed we, to have two guitarists, though. Who's the other guitar player? Malcolm Young. Best rhythm guitar player in, <laughs> ever known to man. Of course. There you go. There you go. Mark. It's understood you enjoy very much playing on stage. What's the most exciting moment during a gig? <laughs> Good night! <laughs> no. <laughs> the moment you walk on stage is the most exciting. Your adrenaline's just, you know, yeah. going crazy, and you run out there and go, ah! So I would say that's definitely the most exciting moment. Yeah. And I actually find it oddly exciting lately when shit goes wrong. <laughs> well, that's very exciting. You know. I kind of enjoy that lately. I mean, it used to be back in the early days, I used to get all freaked out about it and thought, oh my God, the show, it's not going perfect. But lately I'm thinking, oh, this is a bit of fun. This and, is different. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, when somebody's, I don't know, <clears throat> somebody has to change a guitar or some shit breaks down on the drums and you got to go fix it or... I mean, even the weird gigs that we had these lately when oh, people this, got in, sick and stuff. In and, South America, this last I mean, run was, whew. Yeah, it's, but, you know, hey, we're human and it's... We're, we're, One of the best shows we had down there was when Daniel played drums. <laughs> <laughs> it was just insane. With four, five piece without one guitar and our, our uh, drum tech wound up playing drums because everybody was sick. And it wasn't and perfect. It wasn't perfect. It was by not means. a perfect gig by any means, but the crowd was insane. And I think it comes across when you're really just trying to give them a show no yeah. matter what. Because, I mean, perfection is, can be boring, too. You know, so yeah, I guess so. Wouldn't overdo it on the imperfections. Mm -hmm. we're, trying not, we're always trying to do perfection or like as good as possible. But hey, but if shit goes wrong, I kind of like that sometimes. It's not easy being perfect. As, well, speak for yourself. All right. <laughs> What is next here? You are next. I mean, I'm... I'm oh, you have to, to ask, ask me, me that question. Oh, no, that was... We're right. number okay. nine now. I number think. nine, Wolf. In the 90s, you've been out on stage for 10 years. Out, and then off the stage, I think. Off the stage. Yeah. No, it says out of the stage. Okay, yeah. out of the stage. Yeah. Off the stage for off 10 the... years. And then, thank God, you suddenly gave Accept a new brand, Second Life. Can you describe 
What did you feel the very first time you opened a gig after a long break? In your shoes, I'd certainly explode with pride. Oh, wow. I, I, I don't know that I exploded with pride, but it was certainly a moment. Yeah, I mean, the weird thing, here's, here's what happens. When you haven't been on, and you probably know this as much as I do, mm -hmm. when you haven't been on stage for a while, you kind of uh, lose a bit of your confidence because you think like, fuck, do I still do I still have it? Can I yeah. still do this? And the more you do it, of course, when you're on the road, you're on tour, it's a piece of cake. You don't even think about it. You just go out there and you, you know it's going to work. But when we when you haven't done it for, especially for a few years, and at that point we hadn't been on stage for it's what? It's just not, you're not on autopilot anymore, you know? No, it's, and it's, you, you're, sort you're, of, you're, you're kind having, of feeling it out. And you're, you're having, you second guess everything, you're nervous as hell. So, yeah, it was weird. But the weird thing then, as soon as you're on stage, and I, I remember that feeling very clearly, it's you go like, out there and you think like, oh yeah, this is like, where I belong. Like riding a bike. It's like, oh yeah, I'm home kind of thing. Yeah. You know? It's a good feeling. Yeah. So there. All right. Mark. This is both you, of us now. Well, ten. I'm going to ask you. So do you think music should stand for its own or rather be, ve be a vehicle for something to say? Uh, what? Well, it depends on what you're trying to say. If it's politics, keep it to yourself. If yeah. it's religion, keep it to yourself. Yeah. I agree. Um, the music has to stand by itself. Um, you can say something, yes, if you have something positive to say. But uh, even if you have nothing to say, the music needs to stand up. And yep. and and it needs to be a good song. <laughs> End of the day, that's it. Even if you have nothing to say, say it well. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I, yeah. I mean, ideally, the, every song has somewhat of a message or a story or whatever, but we've never been a band that... that that is all about messages and stuff. I mean, no, but there's been some great ones, you know. Yeah. Even Balls is, is, has yeah. a great message, you know. Of course, yeah, um, absolutely. We're very proud of that, but at the same time, it's first and foremost about the music, I would say. Yeah? No? Yes, I agree. All right, carry on, my son. Uh, Wolf, if you could choose just one thing except will be remembered for forever, what would that be? Mm. Hmm. All of it, really. Good music, hopefully. I mean, what else is there? Yeah, well, I, that's what I would say. I mean... Uh, Maybe the fact that you started thrash metal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a, a his, histor that, that is history a bit of a fact, in a way. In a moniker way. to wear, isn't it? First speed metal song in history, supposedly. Which so they say. Yeah, and yeah. I can't think of another one. So before that. And maybe one of the first metal bands out of Germany, so to say, too. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that you want to be. I mean, to me, it's mind blowing that these songs that we wrote all these years ago, I even still listen to, and people still have the albums and they bring them to us. But signed revered. These. Huh? They're revered. Yeah. As, you know? I mean, who would have thought, who could have ever foreseen that? And even the stuff that we write today might be around for a long time. Yep. That's, that's the magic of music in a way, isn't it? I mean, Good, look at, look at what the Beatles have done. They have the huge resurgence mm. and 50 years later or whatever it is, 60 years later. Good mm. God, it's insane. We're not exactly the Beatles, you know. No, that? but I'm just saying, though, that the power of music <laughs> no, is I know, just... No, I know what you mean, of course. Yeah, it's insane. Absolutely. And that's the, I mean, I've done, like somebody said, yeah, we've just talked about it, photography and things. I've done that and I enjoyed that, but that's kind of a throwaway thing, unless it ends up being on an album cover, which again is music. But the, what rem, uh, always amazed me about music is the fact that it doesn't go away. It just, no, it just stays. You know, where a lot of other stuff that we do for a living, it just get, it gets forgotten about and it's, it's, who cares about, you know. I don't know, man. I was an electrician for a lot of years, man. And I'll drive down the street and point to my wife. See that? I built that. Yeah, so. okay. There you go. <laughs> electrician with pride. <laughs> I built that. Yeah. All right. Um, Mark, can you tell us something about your early years as a singer? You're still in your early years, aren't you? Uh, oh, yes. By Who were your means. influencers? 
Wow. Who are you influenced My by? My earliest I guess. influences? Yeah. Well, Beatles, Paul McCartney, I would say. Plant, Daltrey. Uh, my very earliest ones, yes, that would be mm. the guys. And then, you know, as as time went on, definitely Bon Scott, all those kind of guys. Bon Scott, Naughty Holder. Um, Naughty Holder, there yeah, you go. Yeah, you know, and all the raspy guys, man. Mm. Um, oh, my God, I can't even think of his name right now. But you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, enough. We know it. We, we get the idea. Beautiful. Next. Wolf, can you tell us something about photographing for the uh, books Les Paul, in his own words, and me and my guitarist, Chet Atkins? Yes, I can tell you something. It happened just pure coincidence. Nobody knew I was even a guitar player at the time because, I mean, it was during my t time away from music, so I was just doing photography and somebody called me about doing this book for uh, Chet Atkins. Uh, photographing all his personal guitar collection wow. here in Nashville and uh, so I did that and they were happy with my work and then they hired me again for to shoot Les Paul and Les Paul to me means a whole lot more than Chet Atkins even though I of course Chet Atkins is a legend too okay, yeah but, definitely but not so much in the rock world Chet Atkins mm, not so much but Les Paul everybody knows that name at least because you know, whether or not Paul they did. know he was an actual person, they know that they yeah, a lot of people didn't know. Yeah, that there was exactly. a guy, Les Paul. But anyhow, Les Paul at that time was in his mid 80s or so, maybe. Right. And uh, so he was he lived in this house in New Jersey, in Mawa, New Jersey. Mawa. Mawa. Mawa, Bergen County. And I was invited to come over there and spend like. 10 days or a week or whatever at his house and shooting all these personal one of a kind million dollar guitars because Les Paul invented all these incredible not only the guitar but he invented multi track recording and this and yeah. that. And he's a he was a busy guy man. yeah amazing innovator guy. for so sure so for me as a guitar player this was a dream come true to see these and, and to touch and to play on all these guitars I mean there was Django Reinhardt's guitar and, and like uh, amazing like the one of the first Fender, no casters ever, and all this priceless shit just sort of kicking around like yeah. my guitars here. That's and, insane. Uh, yeah, I got the photo. So it was, it was brilliant. I loved it. We'd all be listening to pink, pink, pink guitar if it wasn't for him. Yeah. No distortion, no nothing. Yeah. yeah. It was a mistake, too, wasn't it? His well, one? actually, Les Paul himself, oddly enough, he was never into the, the Les Paul sound that the we distorted know. Distorted guitar no, sound. No, he didn't like the, like the humbuckers. And yeah. The, the, he, he, he was into the plinky sound, actually. Yeah. He was into the sort of the, what are they called? The Les Paul... I forget now. With a million switches on him, and nobody oh. liked. No, I mean not was, the junior. That's the that's the no, SG. What is it called? The studio. Or the I forget. Uh, anyhow, it's yeah. Not but, the Les Paul sound that everybody loved so much. Wasn't even so much what he was after. Yeah, but anyhow, both, both of them as well. Amazing guitar players. Oh my God, Chet yeah. Atkins and Les Paul. Yeah, and actually, I saw Chet Atkins live here in Nashville one time, and I was wow. I was blown away. He was, he was, he was a finger picking genius. Yeah, two legend, legendary guitar players that I was for lucky enough to meet and, and spend some time with, and it was quite amazing, I have to say. Um, Mark. Yes. What are the best and worst parts about touring? Um, best part is obviously playing on stage. Um and are getting to see places you've never been before and you know, especially if you have a day off, it's nice. Mm. The worst part is being away from home, obviously. You know, you especially if you're out for geez, six, seven weeks or so, and you're, oh, yeah. God, I just want to go home. But, you know, yeah. that, that that's really it in a nutshell right there. It's great to do it, but you miss home. To me, the worst part is the tra airline travel. That, too. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. That gets well, worse. And, and it gets worse every year, doesn't it? Well, it's... When we're doing fly dates, God, you never sleep. It's like you never Ooh. sleep. It's uncomfortable. You gotta be there when super you're early. When you're on the bus, different story. Yeah, buses are okay, but anyhow, we shouldn't bitch so much or too much because no. still quite a 
living the dream after all. But that's the hardest part is the touring, uh, the, the, the traveling sometimes. Traveling and being away from home. Yeah. Uh, Wolf, now you work. What is it, something now? Now you work and are with a very beautiful classical trained musician, Ava. Ava, yeah. Is she an inspiration for you now and for more projects like that? Would you bring her in for more cool instrumentals and except sets? Well, we'll see. I mean, we, we did a few shows this, this year on the last tour. And I mean, um, I'm working with Ava on some, yeah, we're always working on music, musical ideas and such. And then what shape or form this might ever take place, I don't quite know yet. Uh, this is still in the developing stages and we'll see. I mean, we did this orchestral tour four years ago, which yeah, was a lot of fun. Which was great. And we'll see. We might ever do that again one day, but right now we're working on this album because this is priority and trying to get you guys a brand new Accept album, first and foremost. ASAP. Yeah. So, Mark and Wolf, can you tell us funny touring anecdotes? I cannot. Me neither. God. <laughs> <laughs> Too many to choose from. There's lots of funny stuff. But, I uh, mean, the weird thing to me is always like, so much stuff has happened, but when I'm put on the spot like that, yeah, hey, you, you, you can't. I can't think of anything. You can't then, pull one out. Then when um, you think together, when you sometimes sit together and you go like, you remember when this happened? Hey, remember and that? And then, it, oh yeah, you know, that happened and this, and then you, then you, it all comes back. But right now, uh, I'm drawing a blank. I remember that uh, pushing. Well, one one little thing. We were in, what, you remember when we pushed up the, the van up the hill? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> we're, that was in South America. In Bolivia, was it? I think so. I think so it was, anyway, I think we're it was in this La little Paz. van. They have mini, they have vans down there. And they're not mini, I mean, they're tiny vans, okay? And we're on the way to the airport. This is like four in the morning, five yeah, in the morning. Yeah, and there was all of us and the crew in this van with, with the gear. No, I think there was another van for the gear, wasn't there? I don't remember. I know Could it was, it was too it. heavy and it couldn't get up the hill. And it was these insanely steep hills and all of a sudden this thing gets slower and slower and slower and then, then the driver eventually says in, in Spanish, we, gotta, we must get out. <laughs> so we had to get out of the van and actually then and, he could... And not just walk up the hill. We had to actually give him a push and so he could get over that hump and then we yep. could climb back in and we were last, oh laughing our, our asses off because it was like... And this, this is where all the... It's funny the, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was crazy with the altitude. Remember, like the air was really thin. Oh, yeah, it was well, it Bolivia? Yeah, where? Bolivia is like that. Yeah, it's like 13,000 feet above sea level. I, there's oxygen on stage. Mm. And they give you... This is the best part. They give you coca tea to drink. You know what coca tea is? It's made from coca leaves with, that they make cocaine out of. Yeah. But it doesn't oh, get yeah. you high. No, it doesn't, but you wish it would. So. Yeah. <laughs> actually, that stuff helps It's me. good, though, yeah. It's, it helps with the headache, actually. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. That, that's the worst, that headache from, from no oxygen. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah. God. So there, that's our drug story. There you go. Yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. Will yeah, you record? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even say who it is for, but we can just say that. Will you record all the parts on the new album separately or live? Well, kids, we have we have found, I mean, we've experimented with many different ways of doing it, but it's we found it best if one guy concentrates on their part. And even though we always play kind of together on to the finished product, because we start we make demos first, and we then we replace one instrument at a time, because doing it all together digitally is, now, yes, in the old days you didn't. But. No, in the old days we all played together, but that's not always. The, I mean, it's kind of nice because you get a better, it's somewhat of a life feel. But there were still sense. overdubs, even with tape, you know. Yeah, you would still go and fix your parts. Look, and, and Look at what the Beatles did, man. They, they strung two, four tracks together to get eight tracks. Yeah, of course. And, you know, and they would just bounce it and do more and yeah, do more yeah, and yeah. do more. They were so the basically, at the end this. of the day, you do what you have to do to get the best result. Yeah. And, and this works for us. So, I, I mean, I know it sounds romantic to say, oh, we're always together and we jam, jam this out. But is it really that practical? Not really, to be honest. You can uh, get your live album that way, though. Yeah. Once we actually play on stage, of course, we play it all together, and then we record that, and 
there's, there's minimal fixing going on for those live recordings. Mm -hmm. I mean, really hardly any. So, but yeah. What? All right. Wolf, how do you store your sheet music? How do you remember songs you haven't played for years? Well, I don't. I don't remember them and I don't store any, well, I don't Any sheet have, music. I don't have, well, the thing is you can't really write down. I guess you could, but I can't. I never write well, you anything down. You could make down. charts, chord charts. You could make and... charts and on some really complicated stuff. I've even done that, like for, for this classical stuff. Some of it, I make like cheat sheets and stuff. But uh, for the most part, I never write anything down. Um, Basically, you'll go back and learn it again. You go back and listen to it and learn it again. That's, That's what I do. have to do. You have to too. memorize I mean, the, it. If we've played it before live, then it's in there. You just have to bring it to the surface. Yep. But you still have to just listen to it and learn it again. So, no sheet music. Mark, what comes first, music or lyrics? I guess we already, we already covered that. It could be either. So. Yeah. Sometimes it's music, sometimes it's lyrics. I actually like it because you sent me a bunch of times lyrics and I write this. It's actually easy. Well, it's not, that's not really ever easy, but it, it's it's nice to have a proper music, uh, sh uh, lyrics in front of you and you sort of just write the music. It's kind of like a roadmap. Well, it kind of is because the, the when you start reading the lyrics, they have a certain rhythm and you, you get a sort of vibe what the song should be about. And that's sometimes for me, that's a lot easier than just blank slate and you just sit there and, and riff and have nothing. But either way, whether it's the music or the lyrics, you're always making changes. You go back and, you know, yeah. it, it's a it's an ongoing process till you get to the end. So, And sometimes... If you're really lucky, stuff comes together like that, but that's one in a million. Usually, we like like you say, we go back and fix, fix this, fix that. There's always we, something that doesn't fit that needs to be repaired or something, but, you know. Or we make different edits or different versions. Yeah, sometimes I have as many as 10 different progressions of the same song. Yeah. All right, questions for Wolf. Ooh. Are you planning another solo album? Not really currently. Like I said, I'm I'm working with some on some stuff with Ava right now. So, but yeah, maybe one day there's going to be another one. But I'm focused on this right now. How do you pick the songs to play live? Um, experience and 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 kind of know what works after a while. That's we know what works, but then there's the new stuff, and we have to find out what works. Yeah. We do a lot of, you know, not too many bands you go see will do four or five songs off of a new album. No. But we, we do. We've we done still it just do. now. The we, last we just did. And yeah. we've done it all along since I've joined the band. Yeah. And what is the last one here? When not on tour or recording records. What, what do you do in your spare time? Yeah. What do you do, Mark? Um... Besides what do we do in my spare drinking time? beer and being on the beach. And I, I enjoy being home, going to the beach, playing with down my, the shore, playing with my dog Klaus. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. He's the best. All right, and you play it, with Klaus. And I still, you know, do a lot of electrical work here and there. So, hmm. excellent. What do I do? I don't. I don't know. I fix stuff around the house. What do we all do all day long? Sometimes That's what we all do. Yeah, everybody does fix that. Fix your damn house. Um, yeah, I work on music a lot. I like to travel. Um, That's a good one. Traveling is always nice. Yeah, yeah. So, don't really have much of an... I don't really have any hobbies, to be honest. Do I? No. Other than photography? Photography, yeah. Well, that goes with travel a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. I don't and, either. Yeah. Kind of boring, sorry. Um, questions to Mark and maybe Wolf. Is there any way you can do a TT Quick song on an Accept show? I guess we could. It's up to him. <laughs> well, I'm all I'm all for it. That'd okay. be up to you. All right, then. It well, would go over well in New York, that's for sure. Yeah. So. And I think we even tried that once, haven't we? we no, rehearsed I, don't, it. I don't believe we did. No, we're not, we never actually did it, but I remember I rehearsing one I don't of those songs. Remember we, yeah. I don't recall that, but maybe all you're right. right. Well, stay tuned. There might be a, a day. Um, questions for both. 
Is it possible doing some song from the Eat the Heat album live? Which one would you think would be a good pick? Oof. Hmm. Um, XTC. XTC. D Train was pretty decent too. D Train was a good too. Um, you have to tune to D, unfortunately, but you can do that with the Kemper. You don't even have to, don't you? Can't you? You can, but it doesn't. It's a little, yeah. Yeah. You know, like a button you can push and all of a sudden you're playing in a different key? Yeah. It's confusing as fuck because when you hear the actual, oh yeah, when I you know. hear the strings live when you sit here and you hear, uh, <laughs> yes, I know, coming out of the amp in a different key. That's kind of weird, but it can be done. Yeah, we did it on the classical run. We played one instead song instead of retuning or having another guitar yeah, that's yeah, already tuned yeah. down. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I guess we could do that one day. Is there a spinal tap moment you can remember for us? I guess remember I some TT Quicks uh, spinal tap moments. Oh yeah. Uh, Drummers exploding? No, just lost backstage. Can't find the stage. Oh, and, we've done and, that many times. And the uh, and the intro tapes going, and you're like, <laughs> "Hello, <Cleveland>. uh, hello." <laughs> we've had that. We've had moments like that. I know. I don't recall where and when, but I'm sure there have been. Oh yeah, I, I do. Re I mean, I couldn't tell you. However, exactly. uh, con uh, spontaneous combustion has not happened yet. So, <laughs> and no cucumbers in the pants at the airport. So, well. I wear one currently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What uh, is the strategy, if any, of you get a little annoyed? At if, each other? If, oh, if any of you get a little annoyed with each other or someone is upset about something in the band, how would you help one, one, one another, another through any with, small with conflict? Any okay, small what conflict. do we do on tour if we get annoyed? Well, well, Throat punch. No, actually what we do, we go in separate hotel. I mean, in, in our rooms. We always have hotel rooms, single rooms, so we can stay the fuck away from each other, which we, is very important. We, we very rarely have this problem. No, yeah, and true. Especially recently. Well, No, there's a great vibe in the band. and But it is important to get your private space on stage because I remember doing tours, and I'm sure you do remember. Oh, yeah. We are on, uh, we don't have a sharing rooms. rooms. Oh, sharing oh, rooms are just shower rooms, and you hang out together all day long. Oh my God! After a few days or weeks, you go nuts. It's so important to have private time, space, to just watch TV and hang and be in your own world, and not, and then you're totally happy to see each other and go on stage and do what you do. But you kind of need a little, yeah, private time, space. There you go. How do you stay on, uh, in shape on tour? What do you eat? Well, as little as possible. We stay That's in one thing. You stay in shape, number one, because you do two hours of aerobics every night, basically on stage. We all go to the gym quite a bit. Not all. Well, I not see the all. same faces. Not yeah. all. Uh, but a lot I of us do. I see Mark a lot, but um, I hardly ever and see. And as far as eating, you're, you're pretty much a captive audience there. You know, you try not to eat the bad stuff and, mm. you know, you're either, when you're at the gig, it's catered, so. But it, I find it quite hard. I mean, um, catering is okay, but when, man, when you go to restaurants for weeks on or end. At the hotel, you're, you know. It's hard to find some, I mean, it's so much easier to eat good stuff at home, isn't it? When you go, Much easier. Well, you go to the store and you just buy what you want. And certain, if you always get this restaurant stuff, it wears you down. I, I at least it does me. So it's yeah, agreed. It's, it's after a while you get sluggish, and you, you never really look, get exactly what you want. And it's so. never really the freshest stuff. It's always the restaurant food is always no, it's hard. So it's not easy. But, but usually the the gig catering is usually yeah because pretty, it's kind of pretty home cooked a lot of times yeah. You know, restaurant food, it's not home cooked, mostly, or hardly ever. So it's a little challenging, but again, we shouldn't be, shouldn't be complaining. No, there's really, really no complaints. It's just, uh, it's just a fact of you life. You asked a question, we're telling you. Yeah, yeah, it's just a fact of life. So, but there you have it, kids. Is that all the questions? I think all we come to the end of the road. Sheet. So this was fun. Let's Next time we're going to ask you questions. <laughs> That'll be good. All right, my man. Thank you, sir. All right, brother. Beep. Let's let's put this album yes together. Don't bother us now. We have to make yeah, we have, we have to make metal. We have things to do. See ya. Bye. Bye.